Hi everyone, my name is Amanda Hayronisa. A little background about me, I graduated from King's College London in 2018, studying digital culture, of course, which explores how digital technologies impact different aspects of society, such as politics, economics, culture, etc. Here's where I really found a passion for exploring technology, data, and ethics. Today, we're going to explore together the internet and its infinite truths. Let's start with a little game of filling in the blank. Blank is either the greatest blessing or the greatest curse in modern times. Sometimes one forgets which it is. What technological advancement do you think the economist Schumer is talking about here? I would assume that some or even most of you think it's the internet or smart technology. And although you technically would not be wrong, he was actually talking about the printing press. In retrospect, if the blank was to be replaced with any other technological advancements throughout mankind, the statement would still remain true. Just like pi, where it can be represented by both 3.14 and the area of a circle divided by the square of its radius, whether it's the printing press or the internet of things, there is not really a singular truth. That in fact, all forms of technological revolutions can be seen as either positive or negative, and it is not necessarily mutually exclusive. Technology determinists might say that digital media, in this case the internet, have revolutionized the flow of information, breaking temporal and geographical boundaries when it comes to access. It is considered revolutionary for its ability to become a hub for minority cultures and subcultures to find its space and their voices. The free press argues that in a capitalist society, the media is either controlled by big governments and corporations in which information flows one way. However, even though it could be argued that the internet is controlled by big corporations like Google and Meta, digital media enables users to create content and therefore information. This arguably allows for information to flow two ways, allowing public feedback. Yet, with Facebook outages, including WhatsApp and Instagram in the last couple of weeks, what does this say about the quote-unquote monopoly or large control over communication by one corporation? Is it ethical? I think nowadays it's really hard to talk about the internet, information, and data without taking into account the ethical implications. In this section, I will be quoting and referring to research by multiple academics, so please bear with me here. Ritzer and Jurgensen argue that in the digital age, prosumer capitalism brings about a trend towards unpaid labor and towards offering of products at no cost. This can be attributed to the amalgamation of the orthodox conception of work and leisure. Work is defined by Bellamy as a burden that should be gone over with as early in life as possible so that more of one's lifetime can be enjoyed in leisure. Whereas leisure is described by Dumas here as an activity apart from the obligations of work, family, and society to which the individual turns at will for either relaxation, diversion, or broadening his knowledge and his social participation, the free exercise of his creative capacity. In regards to crafting an ideal future, Morris detracts from the notion of lessening man's energy through the reduction of labor by envisioning a world wherein the pain of labor is reduced to the extent that there will cease to be pain. If it is so, could prosumer capitalism where communication is monetized be a stepping stone towards that ideal future or an exploitative one? In an age where social media is seen as a leisurely activity, many ignore the fact that as prosumers, users are also the one creating content in which digital corporations such as Meta, Twitter, and Google profit from. The types of content can vary from passive to active content. Passive content includes static materials such as merely having a profile or account on a digital platform. On the other hand, active content encompasses dynamic digital acts such as updating one's status, tweeting, posting on Instagram, etc. In the case of Facebook, active content not only makes the platform desirable for other potential users to use, but for corporations who want to advertise on their website. Passive users allow for their data to be mined, which when sold to other companies in need of the data, would earn each platform revenue. Due to the fact that social media platforms like Facebook affords itself to be enjoyable through its gaming features and its social features, users don't really realize that they're working for Facebook without getting paid. The exploitation of users, argued by Terranova as free labor, is due to the blurring of the traditionally existing arbitrary line between work and play. This social factory translates knowledgeable consumption of culture into productive activities that are pleasurably embraced and at the same time often shamelessly exploited. 
The current conditions redefine the terms of work and labor as a commodity, where laborers are not being financially reimbursed for their services. Work in a prosumer capitalism could be seen as exploitation of consumers working as producers. Even though this may prove the reduction of pain and labor, the exploitation of one brings forth a hidden problem in Morris's ideal future. Moreover, it must be acknowledged that prosumers are not being protected under these circumstances. Unlike traditional forms of work that are guarded by labor unions, prosumers are not legally considered workers. It is contended that the current protection for digital prosumers is greatly insufficient. The inherent exploitative nature of such acts by large digital giants need to be limited, if not stopped. Such acts spawn a form of injustice, which at its heart stems from the failure in the market to compensate for the productivity of the prosumer. Such blatant abuse is suffered by those who are unaware of the worth of their contributions. In essence, the leisure aspect of social media has helped create loopholes for digital corporations to not have to employ and in turn pay for their content creators due to the illusion of choice. The illusion of choice comes from the lack of realization that once one registers on a social media platform, they're instantly recruited to serve as either active or passive actors. However, could it be that work and leisure has never been blurred in the first place and the use of social media platforms is strictly considered leisure? Looking at the subject through the lens of traditional capitalism, then it could be argued that these platforms are providing a service for their users. Therefore, they are charging their users with an alternative currency, data. Hence, the use of their service could be concluded as strictly for leisure purposes, and their content is not labor, but a substitute currency used to pay for the facilities. In utilizing Facebook facilities for expanding one's social network or for pure entertainment, the cost for such digital services could be considered paid in full through the provision of personal data. This is a cyclic process wherein the information is employed by Facebook not only for their personal gain, but also for the betterment of their services to prosumer. Arguably, it is for the consumer's benefit as they receive a more personalized service such as filtered advertising, news clippings, and featured articles. Moreover, looking at Adam Smith's definition of labor as a commodity, where the value of any commodity, therefore, to the person who possesses it and who means not to use or consume it himself, but to exchange it for other commodities, is equal to the quantity of labor which it enables him to purchase or command. Labor, therefore, is the real measure of exchangeable value of all commodities. Then it could be stipulated that if the value of labor is equal to the value of a service, then labor is indeed not exploited. However, because the use of most of these platforms are considered free, it is difficult to estimate whether or not the work done by users are equal to less than or more than the benefits that comes with these digital products. Yet it is undeniable that the reason why people do not see it as work is simple, because it is enjoyable. It is undeniable that the surge of the digital era has birthed such simple joys from complex systems that has now become an integral aspect of contemporary society. Let's bring all this theory back to the now. Wall Street Journal's investigative pieces on Facebook's inaction when it comes to harmful content on their space brings to the question that goes beyond the personal benefits, but whether or not there is a societal net loss. When I first started studying data science, I was always reminded that there is never a singular truth. And that is, in fact, what I believe to be the absolute truth. To adapt Schumer's quote to today's context, the internet is either the greatest blessing or the greatest curse of modern times. Sometimes one forgets which it is. I guess what I can say is, for us young people, it is our responsibility to remain vigilant when it comes to the disadvantages of new technology. It is our duty to remain aware of it and consider the ethics of things when taking action and making our own truths. Thank you for listening to me, guys. Um, I hope this TED Talk is useful.